starting, and I, I know that she's within earshot, but I, I want to, first of all, tell you ladies how much I appreciate all of you. I do not use the L word. That's just a little too strong for me, but I will show you as much as possible how much I mmm you. <laughs> and Glenda spoke last week about it taking, it taking a village to raise a kid. And I tell you what, and I marvel daily how much y'all have contributed to Kinsey's transformation. You know, when she was like this, I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm fine, and now she wiggles so much she runs into tables, you know, so, you know, but, but this is probably the happiest I've seen her since she was about three years old. Wow. Very grateful, and I, I really do attribute it to a lot of you guys to be right in there with us. So, now I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> All right, we've been learning about being a Proverbs 31 woman in our women's class at church. I've read this chapter many times, and I thought, how hard can it be? I already have a vineyard. And I have the biggest, strongest arms of any woman I know. I've got this in the bag. So with the, all the confidence of anyone who doesn't know any better, I started studying the book in Proverbs. And then it starts out saying, sayings of King Lemuel. Who's that? Wait, let me see. Okay, oh, wait, okay, now I understand. Here it is, all the way down to verse 10. Ooh, that'll work out. That's nine verses I don't have to try to worry about. Epilogue, wife of a noble character. Verse 10, wife of a noble character, who can find she is worth far more than rubies. That's me. I'm noble, I think. Exactly what does that mean? Let me look it up in the dictionary here. Let's see. Here it is. Well, the first definition says that a noble person is distinguished by rank or title. Hmm. I don't know about that one. I don't think mom or grandma or honey qualifies as noble. Here's another definition of a, an exalted moral or mental, mental character or excellence. Ooh, I'm not so sure about that either. I mean, if we have to count my mental character, I'm already out of the race. I mean, honey, I need you to do a million things for me today, and mom, I need a ride to the mechanics, and can you take care of Junior today, and then grandma, can you buy this stuff for a fundraiser? I bought something last week. I know, this is a different fundraiser. Really? Oh. Then there's a planning committee for the Christmas program and then the clothing program. What's up with the lady who keeps saying, are these all the clothes you've got? <laughs> How many free clothes do you need to choose from? Golly. And the community meal. We put out some really good food. But what do I get? I don't like salad. My tea's too sweet. Do you have any desserts that are different than cookies? I just want to mentally smack them upside the head. Oop, that's not very noble, is it? <laughs> well, strike one of being a noble of no, a woman of noble character. Can't find her here. Let's see, what's next? Oh yeah, what does it mean worth far more than rubies? Rubies? I'm worth a lot more than rubies. How about some diamonds, ladies? Let's get, you know? That's more like it, except for the maybe fairly crazy mental part. Okay, okay, rubies will have to do. Okay. <sighs> Verse 11. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. <laughs> <laughs> well, half of that's right. He lacks nothing of value between all the toys that men need to survive, like hunting rifles, bows and arrows, hunting gear, fishing poles, and other gear. You know, stuff. The confidence? Doubtful. When I'm telling him the washing machine is making a certain noise and he checks it out, you know what he says? Well, it's not doing it for me. <laughs> or the time I told him that the car is terminal, we got to park it, and we really need to park it. Nope, drove it till it died and had to get a ride home. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure about the confidence part. Ooh, verse 12 is pretty good. She brings him good and not harm all the days of her life. Now that will work. I always bring him good and not harm. As long as you don't think count the times I think about drop kicking him. I mean, I would never do that, but sometimes I get pretty aggravated and I pretty enjoy that thought. <laughs> I know, I know, as a woman thinketh. All right, verse 13. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. Well, I like to knit and crochet, but mainly with cotton. I find a lot of wool itchy and flax. Isn't that that 
health nut seed that people eat. <laughs> she is like merchant ships and bringing her food from afar. Well, unless you call the garden, the chicken coop, and the grocery store from afar, nope. And my stern ain't that big. Verse 15, she gets up while it's still night, provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Well, it is dark when I get up most morning, especially in the winter. And I do make breakfast for my family some mornings, but female servants, I wish. <laughs> female servants, wouldn't that be nice? Except they'd probably ruin my pots and pans by putting them in the dishwasher and put a red sock in with my whites or dig up my plants in the garden and put them somewhere else because they, who knows why. Okay, okay, skip the servant girls. That's more work than I want to deal with. Verse 16, she considers a field and buys it and out of her earnings she plants a vineyard. Okay, well I do have a vineyard, but I didn't buy it out of my earnings and I consider the vineyard to be a big pain in the neck because I've got too much other work to do that is not in the vineyard. You know, husband who needs me do stuff, children who needs me do stuff, and grandchildren who needs me buy stuff, and the cooking and the cleaning. No servant girls here. Makes me tired just thinking about it. But then again, who needs a vineyard? We're Baptist. <laughs> Verse 17. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the task. Now that's more like it. I, I work vigorously and my arms are strong. At least I've got something going for me. Verse 18, she sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. Hmm, my trading is profitable. I can't say that trading a life and working for someone else for what I do now is actually profitable, but I will say I definitely prefer it. I love my life on the hill. And my lamp definitely goes out at night. Got to save electricity. Plus, I'm tired. <laughs> Verse 19, in her hand she holds a distaff and a spindle. I don't think so. I'll just go to Walmart and order my clothes from Amazon. Yep, it's a good thing that my family doesn't have to rely on me to make clothes. <laughs> Poor Tom has enough trouble keeping his pants up as it is. I can't imagine how to be if I have to make his pants from scratch. Or this way men in those days wore tunics. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 20, she opens her arms to the poor and extends hands to the needy. Well, I don't know about that one. I mean, I'll help you a little bit, but you better be figuring out how to get the, the, take care of yourself pretty soon. <laughs> Think about it. I am already worn out with a husband and kids and grandkids, church activities, a vineyard that nobody needs, and now I'm supposed to help the poor? What about somebody else helped me? Wait, wait. No servant girls. Remember, they're too much trouble. Okay. <laughs> Verse 21, when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scar scarlet. What does that mean? Is that so I can find them in the snow? <laughs> <laughs> Kenzie, where are you? Oh no, I put her in a white coat today. <laughs> Verse 22, she makes coverings for her bed. She's clothed in fine linen and purple. Well, I've been knitting a cover for the bed, but I've been working on it for years, so I don't think that counts. And I don't wear linen, it shows too many wrinkles. I do like purple, but denim is probably the best choice for me. I don't think they had denim back in those days. <laughs> Can you imagine King Solomon in a pair of Levi's? <laughs> <laughs> Verse 23, her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes the seat among the elders of the land. Well, he doesn't sit at the city gate, but he does go down to the coffee shop really early in the morning, sometimes where the other elders sit and talk. <laughs> I call it the Old Codgers Coffee Club. <laughs> and I don't know if he's respected, but he has used that time to make some connections, but most of the time they talk about their glorious past. <laughs> At least someone else gets to hear the same old stories I've been hearing over and over and over again for years. Verse 24, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies merchants with sashes. Okay, I still do, do linen. And why do merchants need sashes? Do they wear them like a beauty pageant? Merchant. <laughs> Elder. <laughs> Old codger. I don't know. Verse 25, she is clothed with strength and dignity, and she can laugh at days to come. Okay, I like being strong. We know that. I don't know about the dignity part. I don't believe there is a dignified bone in my body. In fact, I've done some pretty dumb stuff. I remember one time when, oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> I don't, haven't figured out the need to laugh at days to come, I guess because I'm too busy laughing at all the stupid stuff I've done in the past. You know what they say. 
you got to be able to laugh at yourself. I've done plenty of that. And people around me generally do too when they aren't shaking their heads. <laughs> Verse 26. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Uh, probably not. I'm more like the poster child for what not to say or do. And the faithful instruction on my tongue is still under maintenance for putting filters in place. <laughs> so verse 27, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Well, this one might work. I mean, I do try to watch over my family and anticipate their needs. And I guess I don't eat the bread of idleness. I mean, I'm not really sure what that means. I mean, making bread is a lot of work. There's no idleness there. <laughs> On the other hand, nothing beats good homemade bread, rolls, and, and, and bread, and dinner rolls. Bread and dinner rolls. All right, verse 28. Her child arise and called her blessed, and her husband also praises her. Okay, if by arise that means when they get up in the morning, blessed would not be the word that I use. <laughs> Kenzie, this is the fourth time I've told you to get out of bed. Hurry up, you're going to be late. I'm up, grandmother. <laughs> Your eyes are not even open. Yes, they are inside my head. <laughs> and my husband, well, he's already up and down at the old Codgers Coffee Club, and I'm pretty sure he's not singing my praises down to his friends down there. And then it kind of reminds me of what Mike says, always says about Cheryl. You only had one job. <laughs> Verse 29. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Aw, thanks. Wait a minute. Is my husband supposed to be the one that's saying that? That's not going to happen. <laughs> Verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Well, I'm not very charming, so at least I'm not deceptive. <laughs> and beauty fled a long time ago. <laughs> so if there's one thing for, to praise me for, it would be that I do fear the Lord. And I'm grateful every day that God does not thump me pretty regularly for my hard-headed mouthiness. Verse 31, honor, for, honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise in the city. Now this verse pertains to all of you. Whatever your hands do, you bring glory to God, and he sees your hearts and your hard work. We may see all of our faults, and so does God, but he also sees through our stressed out, overworked days, and that, that breeds oceans of feeling of inadequacies, but God loves us and gently guides us through these days, keeping us from actually drop-kicking family members. 